Good morning, Bradley. Oh, it looks like you slept on your clothes again. Not to worry, we need to work on that. Well, it's already 8 a.m. Beijing time. You need to be at your workplace in 5 minutes. Identity confirmed. Uploading personal settings. Tuesday, October the 28th, 2031. Better get a move on. Today will be mostly sunny with cloudy periods. And now, a message from our sponsors. Why there were so many ads in the morning? Bradley, you have exactly four minutes if you want to get to work on time. By the way, don't worry, my eyesight is perfectly fine. It's just that, well, over the past couple of years, I've gotten fairly used to looking at the world through these glasses. Now these are currently top of the range on the Oculus line. We've got plastic lenses, less than a millimeter thick, main stereo camera visible here, and a couple of service ones. They're needed so the glasses recognize me in person. Most importantly, no buttons. Oculus clearly responds to gestures and understands my voice. Check this out. Meta, what's the date today? Today is the best date to get your premium subscription, Bradley. Welcome to the brave new metaverse. Uploading the host avatar. Starting simulation. Exactly 10 years ago today, Facebook's creator, Mark Zuckerberg, changed the parent company's name to Meta. Now at that time, Facebook was under an avalanche of criticism. The networks were being accused of spreading unverified information about COVID-19, an event that, as we now know, was the main suspect for the troublesome 2020s. Dismissed employees of the company were writing complaints about Mark himself. Even his maids didn't shy away from truly heart-wrenching reviews. Therefore, most journalists tended to agree that this new name was intended to distract investors' attention from all of these scandals. But only Mark himself knew that his team had money, technology, and a clear vision of the future. All of that was needed to really start that information revolution. By the way, I'm sorry, I have to leave you for a short while. I certainly didn't come to China for the chicks. Meta, turn on protective mode. Protective mode is on. Now Mark confirmed the seriousness of this deed with his budget for the new division. $10 billion. Just think about that for a moment, 10 billion. That's the same amount that was spent by Elon Musk creating the global satellite system known as Starlink. Hmm. It's pretty easy to see where Elon's money went. I mean, astronomers say that there are so many Starlink satellites in space that they seriously interfere with stargazing, as fewer stars are actually visible from the Earth as a result. But what did Mark's team really spend the money on? The games, of course. The history books say that the Minesweeper and the Solitaire games appeared on Windows with a very interesting hidden function. They were added to the system to teach users how to work with a mouse. Now, the same technique was used by the creators of Meta. First of all, they created a platform with a lot of simple but yet addictive games. The main feature of the platform was enabling the user's avatar to freely move between games, and at the same time, letting it carry objects, earning points, loot, and lots of other things. They imagined that a player could be picking up and reloading a gun in a shooter, and the next minute, well, the player would appear in a boxing ring, right? And games aren't really separate programs anymore in this space. Instead, they function as rooms along a long hallway that one can access as they please. And a little later, users of the platform had the opportunity to create simple games themselves. Meta had published a map editor and a detailed guide on creating relevant scripts. This didn't come without its fallbacks. Experienced gamers maliciously compared the platform to historical games such as Roblox and Fortnite, but they failed to notice one thing. More and more new elements from other Facebook projects were appearing in the meta universe. Instagram and Facebook news feeds could be viewed from the virtual desktop. The avatar could take a picture in the Instagram photo booth and could directly send a message to a friend on WhatsApp. And gradually, third-party services began to join the project too. First it was Pinterest, then it was Spotify, and then Adobe Creative Studio came around. Hello. 
Now, third-party services effectively turned Meta's corridor rooms into advanced and functional office spaces. You can assemble a virtual wall of monitors and display anything on them, any applications, channels, or documents. Working with such a representation became much clearer and more convenient than well, fiddling around with your computer settings, right? Whenever you go to your virtual office, the structure of documents and available applications remain unchanged. And if you've been invited to business negotiations, you can take an entire video wall with you. Fantastic. A user-friendly interface and the ability to work with popular programs led to the emergence of entire business quarters. Large companies are much more likely to gather employees together in virtual offices than in real ones nowadays. And this way, they can save money on renting expensive real estate and they can protect colleagues from the COVID pandemic that is yet to be stopped. By the way, way back in 2021, Microsoft specialists found out that 66% of the company's employees were suffering from a lack of human contact. And 46% couldn't even communicate with their colleagues through conventional video conferencing systems like Zoom or Skype. Virtual offices with good-natured avatars have become an excellent solution to this problem. All programs and applications, by the way, are executed directly on Meta's servers, and we've ultimately forgotten how to install programs on our computers. Your device really only serves as, well, a means of displaying the result, like a monitor. Now even a high-poly 3D model is easy to correct using a smartphone. Now, the ability to work with Meta through accessible devices has become an invaluable factor in the success of the platform in third world countries. People who previously couldn't afford these expensive computers or smartphones have now become a part of this new digital world. Each user of the platform can speak their own language as an automatic translator, much like a babblefish, translates the words into the language of the interlocutor. So, Meta gradually erased these digital boundaries that existed between electronic services, programs, and even countries. But Zuckerberg is going even further. He's going to combine three realities, the ordinary, the virtual, and the augmented. And for this, Meta engineers are developing entirely new devices. I never asked for this. Look at this vintage smartphone I've got in my hand. Now it occupies a very small part of what my eyes see. For me to get more useful information, I need to either increase the size of my screen or move it closer to my eyes. Now, Meta actually has a division that develops unusual electronics. I'm talking virtual and augmented reality helmets, tactile suits and gloves, and even holographic projectors. Now, augmented reality glasses, like these ones, are becoming the simplest and most popular form of communicating in Meta. The first serial samples appeared back in 2012, but manufacturers really only worked out the kinks in the late 20s. The problems were really to do with the lack of computing power of the processor and also the complexity of combining the beams of laser projectors. Now, such glasses, according to their principal operation, most resemble wireless headphones of the early 2020s. The entire video stream is formed on a main device, for instance a smartphone or a computer, and the processor and the glasses, well that only decodes the signal. As a result, I have a lightweight and comfortable monitor that's always with me. Look, let me show you something. Just with one command, a virtual cabinet appears before your eyes. A projection with a resolution of 8K is enough for working with documents and communicating online. More than enough, actually. The lenses of these glasses are made with photochromic glass, so at any time they can be made opaque and fenced off from the outside world. Now this is an ideal tool for work and communication. But for games, more serious artillery is needed. AR glasses cannot cope with the standard 240 frames per second for gaming. So from my experience, I'd recommend VR helmets. Of course, initial prototypes failed to inspire optimism. Their helmets were too heavy and cumbersome. Right? Hardly anyone would enjoy wearing something weighing a couple of kilograms on their head. Moreover, if you would turn your head very quickly, the processor didn't have the time to rotate the image correctly, and a delay of a few frames consistently caused bouts of, well, seasickness. Now, the weight problem was actually solved by replacing the classical optical system of several lenses with just one variable lens. This technology has been known in theory since the end of the 20th century, but it was perfected only in the mid-20s. Now, the virtual reality helmet weighs less than a kilo. It's quite good, comparable to motorcycle helmets. Now we've got arrays of powerful orientation sensors and mobile risk processors, and these have really helped with picture lag. No one gets seasick anymore with modern helmets. But still, helmets remain entertainment for enclosed spaces only. I mean, you don't see people walking down the street in them. Nevertheless, complete with tactile suits and gloves, they can make games incredibly realistic. From my personal experience, I played Black Ops 7 the other week in mine, and it was terrific. 
You just need to remember to air them out occasionally. I mean, otherwise the smell of sweat will probably putrefy your experience. And to disappoint Matrix fans, neuron interfaces will have to go through a long and tedious process of approval with medical organizations. Therefore, alas, I do not think they will appear on the market before the middle of the 21st century. Well, since Meta has been designed to break boundaries, it would be strange to use some standard form of payment, right? In order to remain separate from the banking system and not to be afraid of interference from financial authorities, Meta's own cryptocurrency was created. Officially, it's the only means of payment with Meta. It serves for the purchase of virtual assets, NFTs, subscriptions to streaming services, and also the rental of electric cars. Moreover, it's accepted as a payment method on all marketplaces. Bureaucrats from the European Union initially tried to ban this currency, but the business quickly found a way out. Now we're making orders not directly, but rather through intermediaries, registered in states free from unnecessary and restricting laws. Ordinary users didn't even notice this. End-to-end -end authorization and mandatory tracking of digital fingerprints of all devices on the network are laid down at the level of Meta's core protocols. A couple of years ago, Meta returned to experimenting with unconditional income, which is quite interesting. Now, each user of the Metaverse is entitled to a fixed monthly premium. It is quite enough for a basic set of products and basic necessities. This measure has become a real salvation for millions of people around the world who have lost their jobs. We're talking truckers, shipping crews and couriers. I mean, they've all been replaced by autonomous delivery vehicles, from tiny quadrocopters to large multi-axle road trains. What large states have not dared to do, the largest private company is actively implementing. It's hardly surprising that Zuckerberg's metaverse is now more than 2 billion regular users. <laughs> Well, let's get back to the present for a minute. Would you like to live in such a world? I mean, I admit, I'm a bit alarmed by Meta's ambitions. Mark Zuckerberg missed the chance to participate in the mobile revolution. When the smartphone market was forming, Facebook was still a pretty weak player. Perhaps that's why Mark didn't want to postpone the matter any longer. Now, I support the decision to start with hardware and protocols, but I'm afraid of the company's desire to explore and control the social graph. I've already told you more than once about the amount of information collected by IT giants, you know, Facebook, Apple, and Google, so I'm not going to repeat myself there. On the other hand, without the support of other market players, Zuckerberg's new universe would just turn into another second life, just with blockchain and augmented reality. The most recent breakthrough has been mobile internet. With its advent, we got used to the internet literally being always at hand. But whether we'll ever get used to living inside the information we're now having to search for, I think we'll find out in a dozen years or so. That is how much time Zuckerberg thinks it will take to create his metaverse. Well, my name is Bradley, and I hope we'll meet plenty of times before that universe ever materializes. And I'd like to thank you all for joining me in another scintillating space age saddleback sneak between the shaggy and spry succulents of the online jungle. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the brand new Metaverse. <laughs>